Williams, all right? Carly, she is from Irvine, California, and studied, whole, studied at the Holistic Health Coaching Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'll say that 10 times. Uh, she is the CEO of Team Iron Eagle. No, Edge, Edge. <laughs> What's that? Iron Edge. Iron Edge. It says Edge. It really does say Edge. Just can't read. Iron, I just can't read. It's not a big deal. Alright, I will tell you where I got my degree from. <laughs> Carly is an eight-star diamond coach. One of our 2014 top ten elite coaches. Recently returned to France. She was one of our top five recruiters in 2014 is, and is a Success Club 10 legend. That's Carly. All right, Monica is also a California girl, Coronado. All right, she is the co-founder of, if I can say this, the Fit Club Network. Yes. All right, mother of two with a master's degree in elementary education. <laughs> she strives to make an impact on the whole family. Uh, Monica is a 14-star diamond and one of our founding coaches. A 2014 elite coach and has hit elite coach, it says here, six times. Wow. That is awesome. And part of our wonderful Beach Body Millionaire Club. So Monica Ward and Carly Del Carlo. Take it away, you guys. Thank you. Woo! Welcome to Coach Summit. Wanting to speak all southern, like, I don't know. I, I, Thank try. You, I, I don't know. Anyways, I heard Becky Brissett tell you guys that you guys are the six percent of the coaches that made your way out here. You made the trek. If you're parents like I am, I had to make babysitting arrangements, although my 12 and 14 year old don't feel like they need to be babysat. They just were like, give us the keys to the car, mom, and we're good to go. But um, yeah, we had to make arrangements to get out here, book the flights. I've never been to Nashville. Have you been to Nashville? No, first time, loving it. And, you know, dealing with one kid lost a tooth and all the things that are going on in my absence. So we know it was a huge sacrifice for you guys to be here. Not, not to mention malnutrition and dehydration. Anybody <laughs> feeling that? <laughs> it's a little bit hot for us SoCal girls. <laughs> Definitely a little sweaty. We want to be a little more comfortable in our looking for that um yeah so <laughs> bottom line is we're so stoked to be here i've been to every single coach summit and i think there's twice as many three times as many people in this room right now no no kidding probably like this row right here was at the first coach summit all you know and you'd be like gosh you're rude to work out with tony you know and like now there's like eight million people working out with tony so it's Carly's first time on stage, and we're hoping that you can just oblige us with a little bit of a, just let us have a moment, because this is part of our story, our journey too. We're coaches just like you guys, and um, we want to capture this moment for us. <laughs> so, we're gonna take some selfies, and we want a little enthusiasm from you guys. I know you sat through two sessions, and we're hoping that we have a lot of good information to deliver to you today, so. Do a video? Yeah. Can we do a video? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Oh my gosh. Are we here? You want to do it? We're going. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Like you, we all started off on day one, 
signing up our first coach, signing up ourselves, then signing up our first coach. And uh, the one thing that uh, I guess real talk here is uh, you're all hearing this information for the first time, or not, or you know this, you know this, and a lot of you are doing it, but it's so important for you to understand that you need to go out there and tell your story. That before you can be a, become a high-performing coach or all of the other things that you're going to hear from the individual coaches, it starts with your story. It starts with you having the courage to share. And we know that all of you in this, in this room are going to hear the information, but only a fraction of you are actually going to leave this room and have the courage to tell your story. So we're encouraging you to don't be that larger percentage. Be that small percentage that are gonna be awesome and go out there and tell your story. And if you're anything like me, I kind of like numbers and knowing, and if you're saying you're sitting here thinking, okay, I can tell my story, how often should I tell my story? How many times a day? Um, you know, for me, I say anybody and everybody who has ears, tell them. Um, but you know, I would say if you're talking about numbers for a successful coach, I would say you need to be get, getting in front of, and that can be social media, that can be somebody at the grocery store, it can be anyone, at least two to five new people a day to be hearing your story, at least a piece of it. And we're gonna get into that later about pieces of your story and breadcrumbing and just little pieces for people to get to know you. But I would say on average, about two to five people a day hearing something about your story, new people, that doesn't include follow-ups and all of that, two to five new people that should be hearing pieces of your story. Okay, but I'm super curious. <laughs> What does it take to be a top 10 coach? How many times do you have to tell your story every day? You know, I tell my team that if I, they can do two to five a day, I'm going to at least do double, triple that. And I would say, especially last year when I was pushing hard and right now, I was getting in front of at least 20 to 30 new people a day. And um, that was people I was meeting on Facebook groups, people at Target, stalking them in the aisles, asking them questions. Um, getting in front of at least 20 to 30 new people a day and adding them to my contact list was absolutely important. So if I can do 20 to 30 a day, sometimes 50, absolutely to hit success club and hit your goals. And if you just want to get the ball rolling as a newer coach, two to five people a day. But if you want to know what top 10 took, I would say probably 20 to 30 new people a day. My contact list is just pages. Perfect. Okay, success leaves clues. How many of you would love to take a three-week vacation like she did to Europe? Paid, luxury, first class, beach body, all the way. Yeah, so there you go. 30, 20. Yeah. And just if any of you guys here are this is your first summit, last year was my first summit. So you know, going from that to this and just coming back from a three-week vacation, all that, absolutely doable for any of you. So okay, excellent. All right, but why? <laughs> Why tell your story? You know, I get asked this question a lot, and because I think I've become somewhat of a pro, I don't know if you feel that way too about telling your story. <laughs> At least telling pieces of it, come on. You're Monica Ward. Um, telling pieces of your story, and people ask me why. You know, why is that so important? Can't I just post a picture of Autumn Calabrese and her amazing abs, and people will buy challenge packs from me? I, no, I mean, maybe, actually, maybe somebody will do that, but that's not how it works for me. Telling my story and telling pieces of it is what absolutely works for me. And the number one reason telling your story is so important is because, A, it shows vulnerability. I cannot, I'm sure some of you maybe follow me on Instagram, Facebook, I don't know. Um, but, you know, you've, you've come to realize I kind of share a lot of open and vulnerable things about my story. Last year, I posted a picture when I had binged on a ton of calories and my belly was all swollen and all these things. And I've realized through Telling my story over and over and being vulnerable, it actually allows people to be vulnerable within themselves and be vulnerable with what they're working on in their story. So being vulnerable is so important. And I've actually noticed, just a quick side note, that sometimes when I'm having my worst, maybe month, you know, worst month, heartache or not eating so well, haven't been working out, sometimes when I'm open about that, I get, it's my highest success club point numbers. It's my highest recruiting numbers. Not because people are like, oh, she failed, I want to fail, but because it makes me relatable, you know, it makes me a person because that's what we are as coaches right we're just people so the number one um, not the number one sorry I'm not trying to take away from your bullet points but the <laughs> number one reason I tell my story is to show people I'm human I'm vulnerable we're a team okay yeah we kind of get into relationships in a hotel lobby talking to the window and now we're talking to you we practiced awesome. last week speaking in front okay of the so yes exactly it does make you relatable and I'm a busy mom 
and my priority is starting my kids' day off right, and also me being in a great mood and having the best attitude. So part of that is my sweet spot for telling my story is you know little one minute videos on Facebook, direct upload, I know, super dork, things like that. But at five o'clock to seven o'clock in the morning, you can imagine I don't look like I've showered. In fact, I'm an absolute mess and I've got bedhead and the whole thing's going down, but I kind of have this motto, better done than perfect. So write that one down, better done than perfect. Wait, you don't wake up like that? Uh-uh, oh, I do. <laughs> so relatable. <laughs> I realized five to seven, I stopped kidding myself, I stopped trying to be like every other thing. I'm a crazy busy mom that might not even get a shower in, in the day. And so I decided five to seven is my sweet spot time when I wake up in the morning, the house is quiet, and I have time to get my workout done and talk to the people and continue to share my story. So that's who I'm looking for, busy moms. But it helped, doing it. What happens? Oh, it's confidence. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, another thing that I've noticed from telling my story, and I'm sure maybe you have noticed that too, is that the more I tell my story and the more I get it out there in front of more people, the more people are telling me, oh my gosh, like I'm just like you, or that piece of your story really stuck out to me, or I thought I was the only one who struggled with A, B, and C, or whatever it is. You know, like one of my niches is women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. A lot of people don't talk about it. It's kind of a hard thing to have. But I was one of the few, I think, in the very beginning, really talking about it on social media, and um, it got me out there. It built my confidence as a woman, as a person, as a coach. I wasn't even a coach when I started talking about it. Um, and it made me realize that I wasn't alone. So telling your story, you guys, you aren't alone. Even if you have a small part of your story that you feel like is insignificant, it's not. It's significant to somebody who needs to hear that and needs to hear that they are not alone. So telling your story over and over, yes, it's, it makes you vulnerable, relatable. It also builds your confidence and builds other people's confidence in themselves, seeing you tell your story. Well, that's super important to understand that, you know what, you just have to keep doing it and you have to just fail forward and you will succeed. But why are we here? We're here to build our business and we're here to learn what it takes to build a successful business. So obviously putting your story in front of as many people as possible is gonna build your business in direct proportion to the number of people that you're sharing your story with. And I just thought I'd sort of share my story. I know I'm a numbers person too. And um, you know, I know you hear, oh, Millionaire Club, and it sounds really lofty and everything, but I kind of want to relate it to what it looked like from a busy mom's perspective. So I was a full-time teacher raising two kids, and I never got to go on their field trips because my, my calendar was, was like totally parallel with their calendar. So I didn't get to go to their field trips, go to their class parties, kind of all the things that maybe stay-at-home stay moms get to do. I, would, I, I had the luxury of having my kids in the, in the school that I was at with me, but I would like walk by their classroom like, oh, look at the party, I gotta go teach my class, you know. So it wasn't what I wanted. What I wanted was time with my kids and I wanted those special moments with them. So that motivated me to start telling my story with purpose and like going for it and being more intentional, intentional about sharing my story. It was super important. And what that time did was I started to buy back my time with my beach body earnings, like one field trip at a time. So, you know, and over the course of, when I started really thinking about that, my oldest child had 10 years left in the home. And just to give you a little perspective, she has four years left in the home now. But in that time, from the time I made the decision to start buying back the time till today, I bought 31 years of my time back by becoming a Beachbody millionaire. So you know, that's like huge. I have time now to do whatever I want with them. So long as I keep my spending in check. <laughs> really, I will. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, I know we did some real talk earlier when we first got up here about 
you know, it's a little, maybe a little tough to hear that, yeah, there's a few thousand of you, I think, in here, um, but only probably a small percentage of you will end up going out and actually doing what we are saying, and not to be mean or any of that, but also it's, it's unreasonable and unfair for us to say that, I think, without giving you these tools so that way you can be able to go out, because you might be sitting here thinking, yeah, I'm going to be one of those people who doesn't go out and tell my story because I don't know how, and we're yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're here. We're here to give you all the tools. We are not experts. We're just coaches like you who got selected to teach the material. So see, I didn't have to abandon my teaching career altogether. Um, and we, we took no cards. <laughs> we have no cards. Yay. Thank God for no cards. And we got to just compile all the best practices of coaches. And we're here to just tell you the information. So open up your notebooks. Take screenshots of or you know, snap photos of the, uh, the PowerPoint slides and learn and understand that what we're teaching you right now is everything. If you're not telling your story, then people aren't going to be motivated to take action, either to join business with you or to get into a challenge group. So your story is important. I think we wanted to say it was the secret sauce, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Tal always asks about the top coaches. Oh yeah, what do you do? Well, how are you so successful? The secret sauce, like, let me tell you. It's really your story, over and over and over. So, Absolutely. So, what can you expect right now? We're gonna tell you how to tell your story. So, for me, it's one minute videos. Every day I call them like full disclosure. And it's the ups and downs of busy moms and you know having kids who might leave french fries on their plate and stuff like that and it's me overcoming or setting myself up for success and really allowing people to come into my life and be on the journey with me and i'm not looking to impress every single person on the planet i'm just looking to relate to people who want to join with me because at the end of the day their enthusiasm that re-motivates me, re-energizes me. Just like being at this summit, I've been to every single summit, and now this summit in particular has me out of my mind, you know? So that's what we're here. We're here to tell you how to tell your story. We're also gonna talk about when to share it, um, because maybe, you know, there might be some times where it may not be so appropriate to tell somebody your story. Um, but there are times and there are ways, even if it's not the time and the space right away, when you get to connect with somebody, there's always a time and space to share your story, whether it's on social media or face-to-face, -face, always. And we're gonna go over that. We're also gonna talk to you guys about why tell telling your story is what connects you to people. Why that connection of telling your story over and over and over is so important to build your business because that, at the end of the day, I hope you guys are here to build your business, right? Yes. Um, so I, you can hear this and you can hear it over and over, but telling your story, we want you guys to relate it back to building your business because I want you to be on this stage next year and I want to hear your story, maybe not the same subject, but I don't know. I want you to be up here and in order to get up here and be successful and keep rocking this business, telling your story is absolutely important. Exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of stories that can be told out there, lots of funnies, but basically we want to cover what is your beach body story? So it starts with the main idea. This now we're actually getting into the teaching part of it. And so we've identified these three topics. Financial, I just got through telling you my financial story. And I know that's like a really grand accomplishment, but it, you know, it can it starts with those few first like buying back my time buying back the time to be able to attend my child's field trip or a class party that's where it started and carly had a really cute story of one of her coaches you know it's amazing hearing a millionaire story and being in this business for quite a while and the financial freedom you gain because goodness knows i'll be in that millionaires club one day but if you might be sitting here thinking just like me maybe well i'm not anywhere near a million dollars yet your story doesn't have to be a million dollar story yet in order to tell it. Um, one of my very first coaches with her very first challenge pack about a year ago, I think, um, she didn't even hit success club that much. She sold one challenge pack to her neighbor. And with that, I think $50 commission that she made 
Jane, her husband and her were allowed, or not allowed, were able to go on a date night for the first time since their baby had been born, which I think he was two years old. And they didn't even get to do anything on their date night. They had just enough money to pay for their babysitter. So just know, and I told her, I remember being on a call and I was sobbing as she was telling me the story because I'm a crier. Um, and I was like sobbing because it doesn't always have to be a huge moment. It can be those little moments. And if that, if you have something like that, you, you bought your groceries, you were able to pay for your son's field trip, like Monica said, buying one field trip at a time, that's your story. It begins there, it begins with that date night. It begins with that field trip. I don't know, love language, one of the love languages. Have any of you read that book, The Five Love yeah. Languages? Like, totally is quality time. Yeah. I don't know, I just got a little romantic feeling right there. Like, <laughs> and a little dirty, like, like what do you mean they didn't do anything? Things. Stop it. Yeah, they did. Not up here. Okay, it wasn't. <laughs> They're like, no profanity. They're like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Okay. What other story? Sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. So you see three things up there, I'm assuming. Um, financial, physical, and emotional. It doesn't, maybe your story has all three. At this point, mine has all three, but it started with one of these. It definitely, certainly didn't start financial, and I will tell you my story in a little bit. But I do have a physical story, um, and you'll hear more about that too. So just know that it doesn't have to be financial. It doesn't have to necessarily be physical. It doesn't have to be emotional, but there is something in there for each of you, guaranteed. I want you to think about how your life has changed in these three categories, and there's something, guaranteed there's something. It might take some brain work or talking to your coach, your success partner, but there's something in there that you have to tell to the world, and the world needs to hear it. Oh yes, absolutely, <laughs> definitely. I know, obviously you know, I don't ever get the remote in my household, it's okay. <laughs> So like I just said, you know, we are up here giving our examples and that's that's wonderful and I hope you guys enjoy hearing parts of our stories. But right now, as I read these questions to you, I really want you to take a second, even if you're into like closing your eyes, I don't know. Um, take a second. Open your to, eyes. What? Open your eyes. No, Stop it. close your eyes and think. Oh, close your eyes yeah. and think. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you can't read them. I'm saying close your eyes so you can take time to think. I don't, you don't have to do that. But when I think deeply, I close my eyes. Jeez. Um, so anyway, so I want you to think about your story and the pieces of your beach body story that connect to these questions, not the examples that we've given. So have you ever struggled with self-confidence? Goodness knows I have. Have you ever had a physical transformation? Was it gaining weight because you were underweight? Was it putting on muscle? Was it losing 100 pounds? Was it losing five pounds? Have you ever struggled or lived with, or sorry, have you ever struggled with debt? or lived paycheck to paycheck? Do any of those questions relate to you? Guaranteed when you take a second to think about those, there's something in there that relates to your story. Right, and one of the things that I want you guys to start doing now is being more intentional. Start paying attention. You know, when something, when there's a little win or success in your life, start going, hey, when I hard boiled eggs, in, put them in my refrigerator, I had two healthy, red, a red container to grab. I don't know, I'm thinking in colors all the time now. And you just think like, oh, I, that's stuff you can share, right? When, before Beachbody, I, I would go grab convenience store food. After Beachbody, I became a little bit, I slowed down, I prepped my food, I put it in the fridge, and here's my fridge, and here's my life. Share it with everybody. And the only disclaimer, that I have for you guys on this slide is if you aren't doing the do, you're gonna find yourself at a loss of words. So make sure that when you leave this room, if you're struggling with getting started, it's time to start. Amen. <laughs> okay, so I don't take this picture of this slide. We both really love this slide if you want to, if you have your phone. Um, but again, in relation to what is your beach body story, I want you to think about these statements. Your trials can become your triumphs. Yes. <laughs> your struggle, you turn your struggle into your story. Your adversity is your advantage, even when it doesn't feel like it. Your mess, because we're all kind of messy, is your message. It absolutely is. Most well, definitely, I mean, my bedhead doesn't have to be your bedhead, but it's my bedhead. Um, and you know, I don't know how many of you had the opportunity to be at the summit where John C. Maxwell was speaking to us. Oh, 
felt like like that was like my uncle or my grandfather. He was so endearing, but he said that those shears bridge the gap. You know, people put, like can possibly cut us down, or they think more of us, or they think less of us, but when we just put it out there and it's real, and it's honest, and it's authentic, you know, that bridges the gap between us. And that's the most important thing, is remember you're trying to relate, because that relate, when people are relating and connecting with you, then um, they get motivated to get into relationship with you. Love it. Oh my gosh, are you ready? I'm so ready. All right, so I'm putting Carly on the spot now. How to tell your story. I would love for you to share an aspect of your story. Sure. So I am going to focus a little bit on the physical side of things and the emotional, but um, you know, if you want to hear the financial, follow me on social media and I talk about that too. But my story as a coach started with the physical and the emotional. Um, my story with health and fitness and um, weight loss and all that started about 10 years ago when I was trying green tea fat burning pills and coffee something pills and I was like 16 years old buying these things at CVS and all kinds of just craziness trying to um, trying to lose weight and trying to feel like I fit in. Um, I, I, I tore myself up and I tore my body up by trying to lose weight and I was about 80 pounds heavier than I am now. So I felt uncomfortable in my own skin and I just wanted, I didn't want health, I wanted to be thin because that's what the world told me I needed to be, to be someone, I guess, is at least how I interpreted. Um, fast forward a few years, I um, ended up losing 80 pounds, but it was right before I was going to UCLA where I did my undergraduate education and I gained an eating disorder. Um, I lost about 50 pounds from, you know, from fitness and eating less, <laughs> the, the old fashioned way. What? But <laughs> what, it worked. Um, but then I got addicted to the scale and um, I lived about two years of my life weighing myself about 20, 30 times a day. And at any point that the scale went up, even by 0.1, I was back to running around my neighborhood or calculating how many calories I was eating a day. I was down to probably between five and 600 calories a day, running about two hours a day. Um, and I went to UCLA and I ended up gaining about 10, 20 healthy pounds back because um, my body certainly needed it. And thank goodness for that. And you know, eating in social situations, it's hard to hide an eating disorder when you're around a ton of people. So I naturally just started gaining weight, which I'm so happy about. At the time, I wasn't happy about it. And then I found myself with a pre-law degree. I was, um, this was 2012, 2013. Um, and I found myself heartbroken with a degree that I didn't really want to use. Um, I was going through an awful situation in my personal life and I all of a sudden gained an additional 20, 40 pounds, I'm not really sure. And I found myself back almost at the point that I had to start over again. Sorry. Oof. And if you have been in that situation where you have lost weight and had to do it again, it is one of the most awful things, um, one of the most awful feelings, sorry, not things, because it's awesome when, it's, when you do it. But it's an awful feeling, feeling like you have to start over again. And that is when I found Beach Body. I started following health and people, health and fitness people on Instagram, um, and I saw somebody t posting pictures of this little, like, teeny tiny blonde person, like jumping up and down, and this superfood shake. And I said, I contacted her on social media, and I was like, I don't know what it costs. I'm broke. I just graduated college, but I need to do that. I need to do what you're doing because I saw that it worked for her. And I joined the Turbo Fire Challenge Pack. I was late on my rent that month, but I made a sacrifice because I knew. I needed to get my life back together and that started with the physical journey and it started. Um, so anyway, I was a customer, I loved my turbo fire, I was working out in a space like literally this big next to my coffee, coffee table in my fireplace and I became a coach a few months later when I saw a vision that I could help people and I could change the world essentially by telling my story and by telling pieces of it because people can relate to my story and I started realizing that when I was sharing bits and pieces of it. And the story hasn't always been perfect, even since being a coach. If you were at our team event yesterday, you heard me say that even, <laughs> thanks, I don't know what I was talking for. Oh, you were there yesterday. Okay. Um, I was like, what are you clapping for? Um, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's really good. Um, yeah. Like, what? So I was 
was telling that, them that even up until about seven months ago, I was still struggling with binging and starving. So if you can imagine going through a whole year of 2014, teaching people how to be coaches and going for top 10 and all of that, it was not pretty, it was not perfect. I'm happy to say I'm seven months like what, so we're free of binging and starving. Thank you. Um, but the reason I tell you guys that is because I just, I never want you to feel as though a top 10 coach and a Millionaire's Club 14 star diamond coach, we have it all together and our stories are finished. Our stories are ongoing and they're continuing to evolve. Next year, if I do a Power of Your Story, uh, at Summit with I hope Monica, um, my story will probably be different than it is right now. But just know that it's not always perfect, but it's your story and you gotta own it. And there is a when, what, and how in your story. Just remember those yellow sides that we talked about because there's something physical, financial, and emotional that is part of your story. Perfect, so just like a little, I know, I, I can breathe through your story right there. That, when you rehearse, you don't like really get into the meat and then she just let her heart go on stage and I'm, I'm like ready to burst out in tears. So, whoo. So when, think about it, take a second, like Carly said, close your eyes or think about when did your story start, you know? When did her story start? And what, what was going on? What, what changed? What happened? And how? Those are the elements that you want to be thinking about, you know? I mean, I can easily say when I, when I started Beachbody, I was a mom. Just had my baby, you know, and that's where my, my story started. But the most important part of Carly's story is that she didn't give you the whole story. She told you that, you know, obviously last year was a huge year for her. So there's a whole coaching side of her story that I want to sit and take lots of notes at. 20 to 30 new people a day, that's what it took for her to go top 10. That's what it took for her to go big and accelerate her success. But she didn't tell you that part of her story. And the reason why we suggest that you breadcrumb, like it'd be really easy to kind of vomit every single detail of every part of your story. But what you want to do is you want to keep people interested and engaged. So you give them little bits of your story and you don't overwhelm them. And then I would suggest that you do this. Spend more time being interested in their stories. Listen. Use your story as a tool to lure people to you. And then spend your time focusing on them, being interested. And remember, that part bridges the gap. That's where you find you know, when you're forming people, for example, that's where you find that connection, that message. Because everybody has their, like, their thing, their sweets, their story, right? Yeah. I like quality time. <laughs> I know you do. All right. All right, so I am going to move on, and I want you to, again, think about these things in relation to your story. I hope these questions you're saying, yeah, that was part of Carly's story and those were inspiring and they made a difference and she was real. But I want you to think about these things in relation to your story. When you're talking to somebody, can that piece of your story and not the whole thing, can that piece, that breadcrumb you're gonna give them, inspire somebody? Even if it's a small thing, guaranteed it can. If it's something that changed you, it can inspire somebody else. Will it make a difference? Will it change somebody's perspective on something? Will that breadcrumb make a difference? And are you being real? <laughs> Goodness, like I said, when I told my story, please don't try and be perfect. People don't relate to that. They relate to you because you're a person. Be a human, be real. Let people know that what you're going through is something that they might be going through too and it'll allow them to connect with you. So be real. Absolutely. Again, though, it's really important. You're shifting gears as Beachbody coaches. You no longer get to be a feisty, well, you can be feisty, but you can sometimes. You know, we're suggesting that you remember you're here to inspire people, so keep the things that you're sharing optimistic or hopeful or let them see that silver lining, right? You can't go now back out there and be difficult or, or be combative or whatever it is that turns you off. You know, remember that you're being intentional now. You're letting people into your life. You're letting them come 
and uh, be part of the journey. You know, so what are you supposed to do with your story? Well, I hope that you have grasped that you have to tell it. It is so important. You need to be telling it to at least two to five people a day. And that doesn't look like, hi, I'm Monica Ward, and I was, you know, a mom. I had a three-month-old. I was looking, yeah, no. Just start talking to people. Be interested in people, whether you're on social media. Obviously, there's parts of, there's going to be a point in social media when you're sharing your story and you're just sort of launching it for that time period. But then there's also the part where when you're engaging with people, with strangers, remember you're making it about them. But part of your story, telling your story, is you need to practice it. So yeah, you know what, because you're going to start to find and fine tune your story and narrow it down and get emotional and really start to connect with your greatness and, and the things that you have overcome and accomplished. And re remember what I say, it, it's better done than perfect. So don't, well if you're a perfectionist, don't listen, go la 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 la, oh my gosh. But you know, practice telling it, practice film, filming it. And uh, remember, you're just here to fail forward. The people who get you are going to follow you, yes. are going to love you regardless of, uh, and the people who don't, don't. And that's not who you're looking for. You're looking to share your story with two to five people, and a few people in that week are going to step forward and say, yep, I'm in. Absolutely. So when you're practicing telling it and you're practicing filming yourself and you have all these like one minute videos and you're like trying to figure out the angle, um, when you're done with that, what in the world do you do with it? I want you and I need you in order to be a successful coach to go out and share it. Share it with anybody and anybody that's anybody and anyone that's willing to listen. But first, it doesn't have to be that huge. If you're still a little bit uncomfortable, share it with your success partner. I, my team, they know they're required to have success partners and pushing each other. So if you don't have one, reach out to somebody that you meet here at Summit. Get a success partner. Tell your stories to each other to get comfortable with that and gain your confidence. I just saw a high five. Are you guys success partners? Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Success partners are so important in this business. That's a whole, we could do a whole topic on that. Um, but also, if you're if you're comfortable with that and you tell your success partner, get on a team call. If, team Iron Edge, I saw you guys over here somewhere. Um, get Ask me to speak on our team call. If you're not on my team, ask your coach to speak on your team call. Tell your story to as many people that are willing to listen. And what's cool about your success partner and your team call is those are all coaches too. So it's totally cool. We're not going to judge you. No one's going to judge you when you're telling your coach, you know, a coach to coach story. Tell it on social media. That's the next one. I know it can be scary. I was like an anonymous weight loss account on Instagram. You know how scary it was for me to start posting on Facebook? I was like a year into my business when I first started posting on Facebook. I get it. I understand it. But I deprived people of an opportunity. I deprived myself of an opportunity by not posting for people to see who knew me in real life. So post on social media. And a Super Saturday, well, Super Saturday is next week, right? Yep, oh my gosh. Super Saturday is next week. Ask to speak, tell it on stage, maybe the one after this. Tell it in front of as many people as you can and as many coaches as you can to gain your confidence, but be willing to go outside your comfort zone and tell it in places that maybe you're not as comfortable with because guaranteed, those are the places you're gonna find your golden nugget challengers and coaches. Absolutely. All right, here's our disclaimer. <laughs> Your story is personal, but don't take the feedback personally. You have to have a little bit of thick skin. Remember, you're only here to focus on the people who step forward and say, yes, help me or tell me more. Um, I remember I remember actually two, two things that happened to me when I was, so one of the places that we, we share is on YouTube which actually Carly and I were talking about this on a side note, YouTube does the work when you're sleeping because there's those people that are sad or desperate and they're searching for stuff and then they might find you at three o'clock in the morning and you're sleeping but your story is being shared. So be courageous to share that. Anyhow, I was, I'm gonna tell this one first. When I was cooking and you know, like I was so stoked to be like, hey, welcome to my kitchen, here's how I cook healthy food for my kids. And somebody was like, um, you're gonna kill your kids with that cookware. 
which, you know, immediately I wanted to run out and buy all clad, everything, you know, William Sonoma, whatever, totally out of the budget. But, um, you know, obviously I wasn't trying to impress the person with my fancy schmancy cookware. Or I liked the one where I was so proud of my after, my after photos from um, having been overweight my whole entire life and then even getting, you know, heavier with my children and then being, finding a beach body program and getting to my after photo. And the person was just devastated that I lost my chest. <laughs> they were like, but your boobs were so yes, awesome beforehand. I'm like, oh, okay, stop it already. <laughs> I've heard it all. I've heard, I'll close my before and afters. You were so much prettier before, or I liked your body before. I'm like, that's nice. I like my body now. <laughs> like, I'm healthy and I'm happy. I don't care about your opinion. Um, so trust me, we've heard it all too. If you guys are afraid of the comments, I can't even tell you the, the comments I've gotten on my story. One time, this is so embarrassing. Uh, I posted a before and after, and the one thing that somebody had to say about mine was that I had a camel toe in one of my pictures. And I'm like, and I'm actually looking back, it's, a little debatable. I was wearing workout shorts. <laughs> Keep it real, right? Real, relatable. Um, and you know, that's all they had to say about my transformation was pointing out that little <laughs> nugget. So awesome. Um, so just know we get it too. We get the comments. We get the embarrassing stories. So <laughs> oh god, I'm so I just told that. Okay. I know. Um, <laughs> no. So this is super important. Take a picture of this slide or write it down. The art of storytelling, this is how you share your story. You're going to reveal it in chapters. Think, breadcrumbing. You know, start with a simple script. When? When, I, um, when my baby was born and he was three months old. What? I saw an infomercial and I wanted to lose some weight and I thought I could do that program. And then how? I did 90 days of Power 90 12 years ago and got healthy. And so that's what you need to just focus on the minor things and then you can start to add color to your story, but keep it simple. And get comfortable with one aspect of your story and share that. And then remember, as you start to practice that one story, other short stories are going to evolve. So you're gonna be developing your financial story, you're gonna be developing your emotional story and your physical story. But make sure that you have a clear beginning, middle, and end. Like when my kids do performances, I was like, and the end is? Because it would go on and on and on and on and on forever. So you know, make sure you're remembering how Beachbody changed that aspect of your life. Did you all get a photo? Yes. Yeah, okay. The next one looks kind of similar, so it's different though. Take a picture of this one too. <laughs> the art of storytelling tips. These are my tips for you guys. Don't strive to be perfect. I keep saying it over and over and over, and I know you're like, okay, we get it, but maybe you don't get it. Don't be perfect. I promise, people won't relate to that. Don't be a robot. People want to hear from you. They want to hear about the messy parts of your story, not the perfect ones. I tell my team all the time, people relate to your struggle, not necessarily your success. Tell your struggles. Also share your, your success. I want to hear about that too. But tell your struggles because it'll make that success so much more relatable. It's also, oh, I just said that. <laughs> um, get so smart. I know, look at me going. Um, get comfortable with sharing your story. Do it often, like we've said over and over in this presentation. It's going to be uncomfortable a little bit at first. And maybe you've already told your story first and you're saying, yeah, it was super uncomfortable. I don't want to ever do it again. Do it again, please. Do it for me, do it for Monica, do it for this room. Tell it over and over and over because guaranteed you're going to get those people who are saying, because you told your story on in July of 2015, maybe the end of this year, they're going to say, I remember you posting that. It's six months later, but I'm ready. Yes. People are watching you. People are waiting for you to be vulnerable, which will allow them to do that too. People are waiting. Be transparent. Show that you're learning from your struggles too. Don't just say, and today sucked and I ate a whole pizza and a pint of ice cream by myself. Yay. No, share something.
something about it, maybe the next day say, oh, and today I am cleansing it out with my Shakeology because I know my body feels so much better when I fuel it with superfoods. So share how you're learning from it too. And just know that Beach Body is a part of your story. It's a part of all of our stories. You're here, right? It's a big part of your story. Make sure your struggles, your successes, your triumphs, your adversity, all of it relates back to your Beach Body story because that's what we want. We want your Beach Body story to be told. I want to hear all of your stories and you know when your kids were born and when you were married and that's all amazing. But here, if you're wanting to build your business, find the nuggets in your story that relate to Beach Body and how that is going to create your story and that from there, creating your story creates your success in the business. Guaranteed. Got that? Take a picture? Perfect. All right, now you're gonna go live with your story. So you need to know your audience. And this doesn't mean that by knowing your audience, you're necessarily going to relate to those people. I'm, I'm thinking of busy moms, and I'm, and I'm thinking of, in like genre, like, or, or I mean age range, like 30 to 40s, you know? I'm, and so that's the audience that I'm targeting. However, through sharing my story, one aspect of my story might connect to anybody, you know? A 20 year old man, who knows? Absolutely. Talk and post as if you're talking to one person. So obviously when you're talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, I hope you're talking to them as if it's only one person. But also if you're on social media, like me, I have, 40 something thousand followers on Instagram, but I really try and make my posts as if I'm talking to one person. I say you a lot, you and I, things like that. So I'm building relationships. I get comments all the time on my pictures saying, I feel like you were speaking right to me. And I'm like, aha, I was. So just know that's intentional. When I'm saying you and when I'm making that relationship and I'm working as if I'm speaking to somebody directly, even on social media, it's absolutely intentional. Yep. And you have to believe that your story matters. You cannot compare yourself to other people. My bed head matters. My busy mom life 